Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 47. <music> Welcome back to another Sunday Floss Tube. I'm Liz. I'm the girl who can stitch. <laughs> um, sometimes I feel like I should have named myself something different because it's, I don't know, it feels very like, I can stitch. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't know. It feels braggy. <laughs> um, but yes, hello. Welcome to my Floss Tube channel where I also talk about quilting and sewing and knitting twice. <laughs> Guys, I used to be such a hardcore knitter. I knit 24-7 every single day and I have not in years. I still love it, but it's just fallen to the wayside. So anyways, every once in a while there's some knitting or some crochet, but mostly it's quilting, sewing, and cross stitch because I cross stitch every single day. Um, I, I think it's like two and a half years long. I should have documented when it started, but I haven't missed a 24 hour period. I haven't missed a day um, cross stitching in two and a half years. And that includes traveling or being sick. I just cross stitch every single day because I love it. And even if it's just for like, 15 to 30 minutes, you know? So that's how I end up with so much stuff to show you guys because <laughs> I cross stitch every day. <laughs> um, let's see. Happy Father's Day. Um, any fathers watching? <laughs> Except my brother-in-law, Ryan. He's the only father I know who watches. <laughs> um, we're going to have a little uh, barbecue and pool party. That's all we do because <laughs> I have a pool, so everyone comes over and we make food and we swim. Um, but we're gonna do ribs today. Um, we're gonna make some ribs and some mac and cheese and hot dogs for those who don't want ribs. Crazies. Um, and yeah, have a good old time this afternoon. So much like, when was it? It was a couple of weeks ago, right? Where I was like, I gotta get this video done and try and get it uploaded because everyone's coming over. Um, that's what I got to try and do again today. And hopefully I don't post this video at like 9 p.m. tonight. Apologies in advance if that's what happens. Um, <laughs> I'm talking a lot today. So let me show you. I've got a lot of fun stuff um, to show you this week. So I'm going to start with a previous finish. Okay, so my previous finish is the Pink Sparrow Sampler by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. I stitched this one at least two years ago now. Um, yeah, because it was, I stitched this in my old house and I've lived in this one for over two years now. So it had to be like two and a half years ago. Um, this was the very first sampler I ever stitched. Uh, this kind of got me um, into the world of samplers. I just fell in love with these colors. I cannot remember. I saw somebody's version on Floss Tube um, who was stitching this and was like, those colors. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that's what I picked as my first sampler. So I stitched it completely as called for. It's on 32 count. Um, it's a picture that's plus, I believe. I wish I could remember the name. I also wish I had ironed out more of the wrinkles before I, this is like one of the very first things I framed. <laughs> I don't even know if I pinned, I'm not even going to open up the back to see how I did it. <laughs> but um, yeah, 32 count. This is not a huge one. It's like 10 something by 1 teen something. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's really not a huge sampler, which is another reason I chose it. I stitched this in like three weeks. Like it was kind of the only thing 
I think I was working on, so maybe two or three weeks, um, I stitched this one up before I had like 30 something whips <laughs> hanging out in my shelves back when I had two or three. Um, yeah, so anyways, this is just a standard, let's see, nine by 12, does it say? Doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure this is a nine by 12 frame that this fit pretty perfectly into. So yeah. Um, <laughs> And the whole reason why I chose this um, to bring this over for my previous finish is because um, Steph from Just Keep Stitching, um, Pam and Steph, so she um, had DM'd me a, a, several weeks ago and I had completely forgotten about it and then was so very pleasantly surprised when I was watching her video this week um, that she had wanted to start a project um, at StitchCon that reminded her and was inspired by like a stitchy friend, a floss tube friend. And Steph and I have become re really good friends over the last year. Um, she's so funny and so nice and funny and great. And um, also we both have a history of playing the bass clarinet, which is so random. <laughs> um, several videos ago she was talking about her like musical college experience and being um in the band in college in her high school band program that was excellent uh and now i'm forgetting what was in the video and what we just talked about afterwards but anyway she said the word i was bass i played bass clarinet and i was like what and i was just immediately dming her and i was like i did too but i was terrible at it she was excellent <laughs> that's the difference <laughs> anyway steph is great and she DM'd me two samplers and asked me which one she should start at StitchCon. They were both inspired um, by me. <laughs> they were st they're samplers I've finished. And I told her I would pick this Pink Sparrow sampler. So that's what she's starting at StitchCon B, which today's the last day of StitchCon B. So hopefully in her video this week, we'll see that she started it. I can't wait. So yeah. <laughs> That's my Pink Sparrow sampler. Okay, next up I had an FFO. I finished Berry Days at Thistledown Farms by Brenda Gervais. Um, I think two videos ago I showed you the finish. Or maybe right, yeah, like when I got home from my vacation, I had finished it. Um, so I turned it into a little pillow for my pillow bowl. Which, hold on, let me, well, it's okay. <laughs> while doing things out of order. So here's the finish, the FFO. Um, it's so cute. I'm trying to make sure I show everything. And then the back, which this was a leftover piece of binding from my king size quilt. So put that to good use. Um, I just felt like the colors, the reds matched the reds in here. And so, yeah, I, um, I left a hole at the bottom and whip stitched it, well, ladder stitched it and then covered it with pom-poms. And I used these lady.create, I think they're called sandy gold uh, pom-poms, which I felt like really matched the little butterfly moth situation happening in the center. And I just think it's so summery and cute. So yay, I finished a little pillow. And then I also brought I've shown most of these pillows recently, but <laughs> I brought my pillow bowl, which is out of control stuffed, and I need like a tray or a tiered tray. <laughs> you can't even see any of these. <laughs> but look how cute they are. <laughs> um, so I'll show you what's in here. Uh, so now I have my, my berry days. Um, I also have three handmade strawberries in here, which um, if I can remember where I found the instructions, I'll Google, I'll link them below. I made these last summer. Um, so these are, oh, let me turn the seam around. So there are three little strawberries I made. These are out of quilting cotton with um, wool felt toppers. And this one's actually out of wool felt and I embroidered little tiny strawberry seeds and a little wool felt topper. So these were just like bowl filler, which now there's too much stuff in this bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but I have some little strawberries. Um, and then I have, oh, I love this. So many people, well, is it so many people or is it just the last? 
I know I saw Celeste stitch this recently, but I feel like I've seen others stitch this recently too. Um, this is from the Garden series by Blackbird Designs, and this is the Basket Full of Cherries that I stitched last summer. So cute with some little lady dot trim and just a little blue backing on the pillow. And then I have this one, which I know I showed you guys recently, which is a Blackbird Reward of Merit, I think. I can't remember what the chart name is on this one, but I stitched mine in hot pink instead of red. Um, this one is a, a walnut shell stuffed, so it's a little, um, it's, I love the way it feels, but like then when you hold it, it's like, meh, you know, everything kind of crushes down, but look how cute it is. And it's got little bugs on the back. And then my favorite pillow ever, ever. I love this one. It's my summer pillow. Um, this again is walnut shells, so, but here you go. Here's a good look. This is by Lizzie Kate, and this is the Summer Smalls. And I changed up um, some of the colors to make it slightly, like her colors are bright, but I think I made them slightly deeper bright colors, if that makes sense. Um, I used a couple called for, but I changed up. I know I changed up this hot pink to maybe like an Aztec red or something. And um, I absolutely love this pillow. And I don't know that I have any of her other seasonal smalls, maybe autumn. I don't know. I need to look because I really would love to have um, all of like a pillow for each kind of season to put in front of like all the other pillows. So you know what the theme is. <laughs> Um, yeah, so anyways, that's my little summer pillow bowl that is overstuffed and needs to become a pillow tray. <laughs> Let's talk about whips. Um, I worked on my um, Summer Jubilee from Souvenirs of Summer by Blackbird Designs. And I only worked on this, I think, last Sunday after my video. Um, so I don't remember what all I got in. I know that little butterfly moth situation is new. And, um, oh yeah, I really wanted to see my red substitution. So I started putting in a little bit of red and white and I think I finished this flower down there. So yeah, just a little bit more progress on my summer Jubilee. Um, I'm stitching this one on 40 count 40 count 18th century blackbird by R&R &R with um, all of the called for colors except I changed my white to oatmeal and my red to licorice red. So yeah. Oh yeah and this was my birthday start last week so um also thank you guys so much for the birthday wishes last week. That was really nice. Thank you. We had a really fun time. Um and the boys with their little uh floss tube uh, vlog. I don't even know. <laughs> Just wanting to run around the house and look at themselves on camera and show things. <laughs> Thank you for tolerating their upside down and all around video. They loved it. They have watched it so many times. I have watched it so many times. It was so fun. <laughs> oh, and I keep this one in my Lori Holt bag. Although when it's all in here, you can't even tell that I have my super cute cheater print in there. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so next up, I worked on the Blue Flower Tudor B. And I kind of kept this one on the coffee table in the living room this week to work on at lunch and um, in the evenings if we were watching TV together. So um, I made some progress, but still not done yet. Oh, there is my Tudor B. I love, love this. Um, so I am stitching this on 40 count lentil by Color and Cotton, and I'm using all of the called for MPI silk flosses, which are so great. And I finally made it over to this far corner. So just have to finish filling in this side, and then I'll get to turn it into a precious little pillow with velveteen. I'm very excited. And then the last thing that I uh, cross-stitched this week was Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. And so I pulled this out of my summer whip pile that I showed you guys that I wanted to get back to. And 
I just absolutely love this one. Um, Becca from Sambri Stitches, I think, is like almost done. If you go look on Instagram, I've been following her progress on this. And um, yeah, I need to catch up because I get jealous every time she posts a photo of hers. <laughs> I'm like, why am I not farther along? Oh, right, because I haven't worked on it in months. <laughs> Um, so you want to see where I am? <laughs> there it is. Make sure it's all in frame. Oh, I love it. Um, so I worked on the top section, um, on the big star, the big quilt star, and starting the eagle's wing, and the letters, and yeah, so just wanting to work my way across the top and kind of work top down from here, right to left and top down, and yeah, I absolutely love this. I am stitching mine on 36 count limestone Zweigert that I over dyed with a little bit of dark brown and pearl gray Brit dyes and every single called for color so yeah that is my land that i love okay so that is everything i cross stitched this week but i also did a lot of sewing this week because if you may remember from last video when i was kind of showing my birthday haul of some of the stuff i got at um local quilt shops i showed you um, that I bought some Bozel or some like soft and stable like foam stabilizer and so many people um, in the comments told me try making a project bag out of it you'll love it and I was like what why why have I never tried that um, it's so good why <laughs> why have I never tried this um, I made a project bag out of my Star Wars fabric from I don't know, months ago that I showed you guys. And I use Lori Holt's Flea Market as the accent with this orangey red zipper. And oh my gosh, I love it. Here's the back. So <laughs> I don't know why I always point out my mistakes, but I'm sure you, some of you would notice anyways. Um, it's upside down if you notice Star Wars. <laughs> In Star Wars, this was supposed to be <laughs> flipped the other direction. <sighs> um, I blame you, Emily. I'm just kidding. Um, Katie Bug Creations on Instagram and on, I think she has floss too. Uh, she, she had posted a picture of a project bag she had made. She was making the fabric version and she had accidentally flipped one of her panels upside down and was like, whatever. <laughs> That's why I DM'd her and I was like, oh my god, been there, done that been there, did that again, like two days later. I DM'd her and I was like, look what I did. I did it upside down. Um, that's okay. It's cute. You can't, I mean, there's going to be stuff in it, whatever. You can't tell. Uh, so I made this um, following my pattern, except I cut the backing to the same size as the bag. And then I did um, sew on binding rather than fold over from the back. So I got to use the Star Wars on the front and back, quilted it onto the um, soft and stable, and then added my zipper panel. Um, I had to wait for some vinyl to come in. I had this all cut out last weekend um, on Sunday or Monday, and uh, I had to wait for the vinyl to come in. So yeah, love this. So I made a project bag this week. Um, and then I told you guys that I really wanted to make a retreat bag and you guys gave me so many great suggestions for patterns. Um, I learned about all kinds of cool bag makers and have subscribed to some new YouTube channels. Um, but I ended up picking a pattern and I'll show you that in a minute, but I wanted to practice, um, with the soft and stable even more so than like with a project bag, but making another like kind of zippered bag with binding. And so I picked this pattern from Minky Kim. Her website is Sewing Illustrated. I will put a link to this pattern in the description box. I think it's the small quilted pouch. I don't know, it's a pretty basic pattern. Um, it is a paid for pattern though, but I'll link the one I used. And I made this falling over this little quilted 
zippered pouch. There's a zipper in there. Um, and it's lined in bugs, spots and bugs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I absolutely love this. I did a little patchwork style as she recommends. I used um, a gingham on the bottom and the binding and yeah it was super fun to do the trickiest part um was sewing the binding like when it's open sorry when you're sewing the zipper and the binding on you know you're kind of going around in a circle on your machine and navigating all of this through my machine was a little tedious um so that's what i learned <laughs> That's helpful, right? Um, but anyways, so yeah, so I'm gonna use this as a little travel bag. So I always, I have a zipper pouch that I made in a Denise Schmidt class um, like eight years ago at QuiltCon. And um, I'm gonna replace that bag with this one because that bag has seen better days. It has been with me a long time. But um, I always use a little bag like this to keep all of my chargers, my gum and my prescriptions like in my, carry-on bag like ready to go like you know so they're not away from me so if I do lose a suitcase I still have like essentials <laughs> in a little bag in my carry-on um and if I need to like charge in the airport I have my chargers with me you know anyway so um yeah that's what I'm gonna use this bag for and I think it's super cute so um yeah I'll put a link to the pattern down below in case you're interested okay so then the other thing that I worked on this week sewing wise quilting wise there's some quilting involved. It's a sewing project, but I'll show you. <laughs> um, was my retreat bag. So I picked a pattern. I picked the By Annie Ultimate Travel Bag 2.0. Um, the reason I picked this is the size. I wanted something where I could shove a bunch of cross-stitch project bags in it and they would all fit like length height wise. Um, and things like a lamp and, um, you know, like a light for stitching at the retreat and just other like bulky supplies, like anything I'd want to have with me. So I picked kind of, I mean, it's not a huge bag. I think it finishes at like 14 by 11 or something. Um, so it's not huge, but yeah. And I can use it as a carry on. It's got a carry on sleeve. Um, yeah, it's just really nice. And I really wanted to try one of the By Annie patterns. Um, I haven't purchased the add-on video tutorial. Kind of just going for it based on the pattern. <laughs> we'll see. I might end up purchasing that if I start putting it together and realizing, mm, what am I doing? Um, but I did get started. And I know I showed you guys two fabrics that I thought I might use for the bag. And I went a whole different way. <laughs> So um, what I ended up doing yesterday was I got um, my outside fabric, my soft and stable, and my lining fabric all quilted together. Because one of the cool things about this bag is that you can make this big, huge piece of quilted material with your outside fabric, soft and stable, and lining, um, and then cut out all your pattern pieces. So actually quilting the big, huge, massive piece was, it took like two hours, three hours. It took a while um, and it was a pain in the butt. But once I did it, then I could cut everything out. And so now I've got a pile, <laughs> a pile of pieces. Like this is one of the pockets. And here you can see that I ended up going with a Lori Holt flea market print that I absolutely love. Um, oh, I can't reach it from here, but I use this um, in my cherries bag um, that I made a couple videos ago, or probably a couple months ago at this point. I don't remember. I made a cherries bag um, from Lori Holt's patterns. So anyway, so this is my outer fabric, which is the Lori Holt flea market flowers. And then the inside is bees. It's called French bees. Um, I can't remember, oh, I cannot remember the name, uh, or like the brand name. I think it was a Moda, but yes. Yeah, so I went with some bees <laughs> and some bright pink flowers. So I've got, you know, a stack of pockets and different tabs and 
I don't know what all these do. I just cut them all out. And like these are the big long zipper tabs. Like these go on either side of the zipper. <laughs> um, another pocket, I think. Oh, this is the base of the bag. So it'll eventually, you know. <laughs> so here's, you know. Oh gosh, do not look at these quilting lines. I thought I knew how to sew a straight line. Trying to sew a straight line on a massive quilt sandwich of foam that does not feel the same as cotton batting. It was a learning experience. I did see, I think somebody commented this and I saw it as a tip on a blog I was looking at um, to use a long arm machine to quilt your big huge piece of fabric before you cut out all your pieces. And so I rent time so it'd be kind of expensive to do that. But if I'm ever looking to make one, a bag like this and I have a quilt that needs to be quilted, two birds, one stone, because I can imagine how much easier this is on a long arm than just like on a home sewing machine. But I mean, I got it done. There's quilting lines. They're a little wavy in some places, but that's okay. <laughs> I really feel like from the front, you can't tell at all. It's just doing its job. They're just quilted together and held together. Um, so, and then these are the big pieces that will become the sides of the bag. Um, eventually I will round, you know, the corners, like to make it kind of like a pyramid shape, but this is the starting point. So I got all of that. And then um, you needed a coordinating fabric for like the handles and the bindings and, you know, all the things. And so I ended up picking this fabric that is pink with little tiny red hearts. And then, um, here, let me show it next to one of these pockets. <laughs> so here's my main print and then the straps and the little accents. I mean, this will be smaller, but you know, you get it. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be my retreat bag. Um, <laughs> making sure I have everything still together because I cut out all the pieces and I'm not losing one. <laughs> so that is my ultimate travel bag. Uh, I don't know when I'm gonna have time to sew it all together. I don't know if it will happen this week or um, if I'll just kind of keep all the pieces together for when I'm inspired to sew through a million layers of foam. <laughs> I really hope my machine can handle all this. I think it can. Hopefully I can handle all this. I'm sure I will, but I'm going to guess it's not going to be up to my quality standards because I've been reading through the instructions over and over like it's my new favorite book because that's what I do when I get a complicated pattern is I just read it like it's a novel. Um, and some of the corners where you're like sewing a curve with two layers of the foam quilted sandwich and mesh and um bias binding Ooh, okay we'll get there when we get there <laughs> anyways so i picked a retreat bag i'm making it it's happening so i've been sewing a lot this week which is why my cross stitch output was slightly decreased i still stitched every day but you know i got really into sewing some bags this week so that's what i've been doing Okay, so haul-wise, um, I got a box from By Annie because I decided to get her zippers and hardware and stuff from her site for this pattern because they had it all like as a kit, super easy. So I got that stuff in and it's not handy, so, but it's just like purse hardware, you know, like the little clips and sliders and whatever. Um, I'll show you guys that as I put the bag together. And then I had an order from Fat Quarter Shop where I got the vinyl I needed and a couple of fabrics and oh yes I was like what came in that order? <laughs> this fabric <laughs> came in that order um and then I also got another piece because I couldn't help myself of the Lori Holt cheater cloth um so I can maybe make a couple more Lori Holt bags which probably aren't going to be for me. They'll probably be gifts. I don't know when this will happen, but eventually I wanted to buy another half yard because I can get like three 
project bags, um, I think, out of this half yard. Okay, and then yesterday I went to a local quilt shop, my local quilt shop, which is Honeybee, um, and I don't know, just wanted some things. Uh, oh, I needed a lining. So I ended up getting the um, bees, the French bees at, oh gosh, do not look at the lines on that one. <laughs> If I had quilted these pieces individually, the lines would be even, but I cut these pieces out of a larger piece and anyways, <laughs> pay no attention to the craftsmanship. <laughs> um, anyways, I went to Honeybee and I got that fabric and then I got this black and white gingham, which I was like, yes, I need some. Guys, I, I did not realize till I got home. This is a Priscilla's Pretty Plaid. My local quilt shop, I guess, stocks them. So I got some Priscilla's Pretty Plaid in black and white because I wanted a black and white gingham. Um, I got another Rifle Paper Company fabric because I apparently I'm collecting them all. <sighs> Look how cute that is. Um, yeah, love that. Um, and then I got a matching stripe because I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll make a bag out of that and then use this as the binding um <laughs> it's so cute right yeah anyways so I got those fabrics and then what else did I get oh yeah this was also in my fat quarter shop order um this is also Bozel this is the brand that's kind of similar to soft and stable but this one is usable on both sides so like when you have to make a quilt sandwich like I just showed you um you can fuse your fabric on both sides and then it won't move which was very intriguing to me um so anyways double-sided fusible so I feel like if I want to make any more project bags or pouches this stuff would be excellent so I'm going to try this out at some point okay and then I tried out a new to me local quilt shop in Round Rock for local people, Austin Sewing. Um, I feel like I had been to Austin Sewing when there was one on Burnett in Central Austin years ago. They said it's like been around forever, um, but I had never been to this one in Round Rock and they have a lot of good fabric. It is like half sewing machine store, like they sell, I think, jukies and fafs and stuff, but um, it's also like a really nice quilt shop because they have tons of fabric and a lot of really good purse supplies and stuff too if you're into making bags. Um, so anyways, I got a couple of fabrics just because I liked them. <laughs> um, yeah, these ice creams. Like, does this not just say summer? This is a Figo, F-I-G-O, Figo fabrics. Um, I've only seen their fabrics a few different times, but they're really cute. Uh, simple Pleasures by Naomi Wilkinson. So got some ice creams. Um, I also got some Priscilla's Pretty Plaid there because I was like, ooh, a red and white gingham. And yeah, so good for you, Priscilla. You got your fabrics everywhere. Two of my local quilt shops had them. Um, and then I also bought, I think this is called espresso. It's like basically what's the 3371, like that super dark black brown, DMC color because when I had decided on this fabric I was like oh what should my accent be and so I went to the store and I bought this which totally matches the leaves but then I was like do I really want like brown as my accent no I want pink who am I kidding um <laughs> so this will get used for something eventually it's like two yards of a Kona espresso or something or maybe it wasn't Kona I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's two yards of dark brown <laughs> and it's not getting used on this bag because I was like, no, you're crazy. Use a pink. <laughs> so I pulled a pink. <laughs> okay. The last thing that I bought, I bought so much. I'm blaming my birthday because a lot of this I ordered like as a birthday gift. How many do I need? All of them. Um, and they've just come in. So <laughs> Um, I bought, oh gosh, do I remember the shop name? Do I remember? Do I remember it? Um, I will. Hold on. Simply Love Fabrics. Does that have my address on it? Ooh. Simply Love Fabrics. I'll put, um, a link to her store 
in um, the description box I've ordered before. Great service, super quick shipping. Um, and so I wasn't even looking for quilt kits. I don't know what I was looking for, but I found two quilt kits in our store that I could not leave behind. <laughs> Because one quilt kit can't travel alone. That's not a thing. Let's not make that a thing. Because uh, <laughs> So I got this one. Um, look at those fabrics. Are you kidding me? And I'll show you the pattern. These are um, Minky Kim fabrics called Idyllic. Which uh, I had not heard. I don't... Maybe I'd heard her name. But I had not really known a lot about Minky Kim before two weeks ago when I started looking at bag patterns and now I love her. I love her. Um, so this is her fabric line which is adorable and it's called Idyllic and then this is a printout of I think the PDF um, so I probably have a better picture somewhere in my email or something but I'll just show you. This is oh there's a good that's a good view. So this is the pattern that this um fat quarter bundle and extra fabrics will make like how stinking cute are these um it's a small quilt so i'm gonna do this as i think a wall hanging or if someone i know someone else i know has a baby girl soon maybe they'll get gifted this gorgeous thing but i just really wanted to make it and i love these fabrics so much so like look at this floral so pretty. So anyways, <laughs> that's the first quilt kit. And then get ready because you're not going to believe the second one. You're going to want to run over and buy it. I know you are. Okay, the second quilt kit came in this box. Like, can you even handle how cute this is? Um, I'll just give you a look at the box. Look at that little wiener dog in a costume. There's nothing better. My sister Sarah has a little wiener dog. Well, I guess Sarah and Allison, both my sisters have wiener dogs, but they're Chihuahuas. They're Chihuahua Dachshund mixes, except Sarah's, my sister Sarah's, looks like a Dachshund and Allison's looks like a Chihuahua, but they're both like a mix. Anyways, <laughs> Sarah's dog looks like this one. <laughs> um. Did I show you all the sides? Yes. So it comes in this beautiful box. I'll show you the pattern. That's the, it's a table runner. It's Happy Haunting uh, by Riley Blake Table Runner Kit um, designed by Primrose Cottage Quilts. And so many people, I posted this on my Instagram and so many people were DMing me and apparently Primrose Cottage has other quilt kits or quilt designs for this fabric. The fabric is um, designed by Jill Howarth. What's her name? Jill Howarth. And she actually designed the fabric that I used for my nephews and nieces um, Christmas quilts that I made back before Christmas. And they're just very cute, beautiful. They look like children, like very fancy children's books illustrations. Um, here's kind of, you know, a look at some of her illustrations. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. So it comes, you know, all in this box. It's got the pattern and then all of your fabrics. Oh, yeah, I'll show you a couple. So this is like a little word search with all her cute little illustrations. Like the night sky. Um, two different colors of little dancing skeletons. <laughs> and then a stripe for the binding. And then I bought this piece for the backing. It does, the only thing the kit didn't come with was backing. So I bought the white version of this because I thought that would be cute. And then this is the background of the pattern. So yes, everything just came all nice in this little box and I love it so much and I don't know what I'm gonna do with this box but I'm gonna keep it because I love it like maybe I can store my some of my Halloween decor in here like my Halloween smalls when I take them down or something because it's so cute anyways um I'll link her Etsy shop I don't know if she has more but I know this is a Riley Blake kit um, so I'm sure there's multiple places you can find this, but I will link where I got it.
<laughs> I think I made it through all my stuff. That was a lot of stuff this week because I really felt like, oh, I'm not gonna have enough to show. I don't have enough stitching. No, I did plenty. <laughs> um, I wanna do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. So um, I'm gonna do a $25 Etsy gift card because maybe one of you wants to go run over to Etsy and buy a quilt kit. <laughs> Or buy whatever you want. I don't care. There are no rules. I'll just send you $25 to use on Etsy. So we're gonna make it super simple. Um, if you want to be entered to win the giveaway, please be a subscriber um, to my channel and give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. And in your comment, just use the word Etsy anywhere in your comment. Does not have to be in a sentence, just use the word Etsy and that's what I'll search to know that you want to be entered into the giveaway. So <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. I need to go edit this and upload this and start cooking some ribs because I got people coming over in a few hours. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.